You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coonhounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Welcome back, everyone, to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. This is Trevor Wade. I'm the Coonhound Program Manager here at UKC, and I'm joined today by the Director of Hunting Ops, Alan Gingrich. What's going on, Alan? Well, I just got back from a Mississippi trip this weekend, and it was kind of eventful, to be honest, you know, but uh, missed a flight and one of those deals, and I didn't get down to the start of my meeting, but nevertheless, it was a good meeting and, and came home to my water pump being out in my well, and you don't know how much you... Yeah, how much water you need water yeah you can't do much of anything without water <laughs> that's true <laughs> at least for not for very long you know got some animals and stuff and so yeah that and it created issues for the uh for my air conditioning you know and yesterday it got super hot not but, a good day for the air to be no out. but we got the water pump fixed and they pulled it out of the out of the well and got it fixed and all's good now but you hey we're not here good. to talk about our personal trials here i don't guess <laughs> Well, if you have an eventful weekend, yeah. we can always talk it out a little bit. Yeah, but. I had a little bit of everything. <laughs> then I thought I was going to pass out working in the sun yesterday afternoon. It was got too late for me to come into work, and and so I did some stuff around the house there needed to get done. But man, it was warm, and it's supposed to get up to like upper nineties this week. Yeah, I think it makes it harder because it's been so so nice the past week yeah. or two. It's been real uh, real moderate temperatures here. And yep. cool in the evenings, and then all of a sudden heat wave. Yep. And my nephew's getting married this week too, and it's supposed to be ninety nine degrees on the day of his wedding. So inside or outside? Well, geez, I don't. I'm not even sure. <laughs> I might not even go. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's just getting all that stuff out of the way before yeah. we have this fall, right? Yeah. So. But no, of course I'm going to go. Well, hey, today we're uh, we're talking about uh, coonhounds, and we're talking about kind of where we're sitting at this at this point heading into a busy fall schedule we keep talking about that autumn oaks the world championship the zones the world championships a couple of beagle uh national events and whatnot and uh and just kind of take a, a look at a snapshot of where we're at in our coonhound program right now look take a look at some of our standings and we're getting a lot of calls about uh when things close or in or when entries open so let's just hash some of that stuff to, out today and yeah. we're gonna talk about some good stuff uh the first thing i want to talk about is is we get a lot of calls uh, from people who are new to the sport, getting into the sport, talking about uh, materials or resources to familiarize yourself with the rules of coon hunts. Um, we've put together some podcasts on that uh, back in, I think it's episode 28 and 29 I looked at. We talked about someone getting into coon hunting, then eventually getting into the competition side of coon, coon hunting. Uh, so you can go back and reference that for a lot more details. But one thing I did want to mention is this past year at TOC, we had uh, Jamie East up there, a field rep from West Virginia. And uh, I don't know, he's he's just real eloquent. He talk, he's talks in front of crowds. He doesn't have any any issue with that. And uh, we got he's him upstairs. He's better than we are. For sure, <laughs> for sure. Uh, we got him upstairs and we did some little segments that they call Coonhound 101 where mm -hmm. he went over some different details. And uh, that's something that we're featuring on our YouTube channel right now. I think every every week or every other week we're dropping a new video, Coonhound 101, where he's going over some rule specifics, and it's kind of a good deal. Yeah, they're just nice little, what are they, two, three-minute clips maybe? Yeah, no of? more than yeah. three minutes usually. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. no, that's a pretty cool little deal that he does, and it's kind of for beginners, you know, it just talks about timeouts, plus points, and all this and that. Yeah, different little segments. Yeah, a lot of definitions, you know. Yeah. It, when you're first getting into it, it can be a little bit overwhelming, you know. All you know then is you're tree and coons and, and this yeah. and that. But when you look at a, you're, you're listening about the event and you're listening to our live show and we're talking about plus points and minus points and circle points and deleted points and timeouts. He talks about timeouts, six minute rules and yeah. things like that. Different uh, things. You're thinking, what in the world is he talking yeah. about? But these, these little <laughs> videos, you know, you can spend, uh, you could take 20 minutes out of your day and listen to some of these videos and yeah. get a good grasp on what these, what these terms mean yeah. I and mean, just become more acquainted with the competition side of things pretty easily mm -hmm. uh, you can find them by going to the united kennel club youtube page uh, which is a great resource anyways we put a lot of event coverage on there uh, there obviously episodes of our podcast are on there and then these coonhound 101 just as far as the coonhound program goes but all of our programs are represented on there um, but if you go to the united kennel club youtube page instead of scrolling through them all if you want to just find the coonhound 101 there's actually a playlist tab on the top there you can hit the playlist 
go to Coonhound 101 and all of the videos are there grouped together. So you can watch them all at one time or bookmark that and, and go back and reference yeah. them if you need to or show them to, to someone who you're trying to familiarize with, with the events. So it's a good deal. And, and Jamie's good at explaining those things in depth. And, you know, he's a preacher. He's a teacher. He's a teacher, a principal now. He's, he's good at that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah, and he did a great job with this. And most of them were one-takers. I think there was one little segment that he had to redo. He he missed a word or two or misspoke, and that was about it. Yeah. 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 Hey, well, he did so good that I guess now we can actually announce that he's going to be a part of our World Championship live show uh, coverage at the World Championship this year. Part of the panel he's actually going to host. Yeah. Play the host role. That role is tough. Yeah. You know, it's not as easy as it looks. That person has a bug in his ear, you know, a— and uh, they're listening to the, you know, the programmers in the back, they're, they're talking to him, Hey, this is coming up, this and that, you know? So, and I've had that bug in my ear before too. And that's a lot, you know, you're having this conversation just like you and I are, but plus somebody's talking in my ear. That's not the easiest thing to do, but I think, uh, I think he's going to do a fine job. Yeah. We just have to see if he's able to put up with the experts on the panel, yeah. Steve and Rick and keep them in check. <laughs> yeah. no, but, so that'll be fun. Yeah. I'm It'll excited for, for a little bit of a, of a new look. You know, we appreciate J Paul being on it. He did a great job and learned a lot about the sport and it does a great job. He's just good at talking, mm-hmm. but uh, Jamie has shown that he can do that same kind of thing. And he's one of our, our field reps. He was going to be there uh, working the event anyways. And I, I'm excited. He's going to yeah. bring a different, uh, Kind of look to the show, I think. Yeah, I think so too, and I think he'll do a good job with it. And it'll, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. See what he does, what he brings. It'll be a little different. Yeah. So he'll be working the the live shows that we're putting on at the World Championship on yep. Thursday and Saturday night. So be sure you're tuning into those. We'll have a lot more information out on our social media platforms and on our YouTube page. Uh, not, not too far from now. Yep. And here again, we're talking about the Jamie E. Step, the same guy that's doing the Kunhan One on One features that those clips that you mentioned. Yep. Same guy. Same guy. Yep. Well, hey, let's shift gears a little bit. We're going to get into some a couple of our programs and take a look where we're at. And uh, by the time you're listening to this, it's Autumn Oaks Week. Uh, if you're listening to it right now, if you didn't wait a couple of weeks to listen to it, but uh, we're here on the Wednesday of Autumn Oaks. We're getting yeah. geared up for the big weekend. And you might, some of these folks might be listening to this on their way to Autumn Oaks. Yeah, hopefully, I think so. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and so let's do a little bit of a Triple Crown update. I don't think that we've done that uh, this year so far. Second leg of the Triple Crown is Autumn Oaks. That's Good right. timing for it. Yeah. Yeah, so right now uh, we have 26 dogs that are all tied with 100 points after Winter Classic. They all doubled up at the Winter Classic. And uh, we have had we get some calls about people interested in the Triple Crown. Uh, one of the, the things that you must do in order to compete and get the, crown of tri- or get the Triple Crown is to compete in all three, the Winter Classic, Autumn Oaks, and the World Championship. Yeah. So if you didn't compete at Winter Classic this year, it's it's too late for you this year. Make plans to attend that event yep. next year, but... Um, and if you entered Winter yep. Classic and did any good there, you could be, you know, we have what you said, 26 dogs entered, but any one of those dogs that don't, did not enter or aren't going to enter Autumn Oaks, that puts them out. You right. have to enter all three. Yeah. And I took a look and I kind of went through our pre-entry list, which is now we have walk-up entries. So yeah. good. some of them could walk up, but right now, 12 of the 26 dogs that had double cast wins at Winter Classic are entered into Autumn mm-hmm. Oaks. I didn't check if all of those dogs have wins at RQEs or entered into our world championship yet. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. After, let's get through Autumn Oaks Autumn Oaks, yeah, because the field of uh, hopefuls for the Triple Crown are going to be narrowed down significantly. Always are. Yeah. Generally, we're down to two, three, four dogs. Yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. say. Two or three usually seems like after. They're oftentimes three. Yeah, yeah. seems like it. And then there always seems to be one that didn't get qualified for yep. the world or didn't get That's in there. That's usually what it is, about three of them, and then there's one that just didn't get qualified. There seems like there's always that one. It's like, doggone it. Yeah. Here he is, you know, really narrow the field down in contention, but the only problem, not going to be at the world championship. Yeah. So, hey, if you're listening this weekend and you hear this dog has double cast wins, whether it's your dog or it's your buddy, be sure you tell them, hey, it might be worth your while to go up to Richmond and uh, and get in and up into Autumn Oaks. Yeah. Uh, you got a chance for a $3,000 check and embroidered jacket and, you know, triple crown winners. That's a pretty exclusive list right there. Some really top hounds and handlers on that list. Yep. I think there's, uh, right now we have 22 dogs on that list. I think it started in 2000, I think. So that'd be actually 23 dogs if it started in 2000. So let's uh, look at the 26 dogs that are right now tied with 100 points. Good deal. They have 100 100 points from the double cast wins at Winter Classic. Uh, Of the 26 dogs, we had five black and tans two blue ticks, four English, and 15 tree and walkers. And we're going to start out with our black and tans. Uh, Our overall winter classic winner, the first one here, Grand Knight champion, Brea Ruth, a three-year-old black and tan female owned by Chris Agapio 
of Trenton, Tennessee. Sorry, Chris, if I butchered that. But. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, uh, this dog is off a of Grand Night Champion Midnight Smoky 7 Junior and uh, Eagley's Raging Black Ruth is the uh, dam for this dog. But yeah, like you said, that was a winner of, uh, of uh, Winter Classic. And we actually did an episode with the owner of this dog. And he's kind of new to the sport, really hasn't competed a whole lot, but uh, brought this dog down to the Winter Classic. And how often does how, that never happens? <laughs> no. Uh, Chad Smith and Corey Jeffries, if you guys are listening, I know you guys have to drag him to Winter Classic. Yeah. You may have to drag him along with you to Autumn Oaks, yeah. too. He's got a real shot here. Right now, he's not, this dog's not entered in Autumn Oaks, is it? Right. Not nope. pre entered. Nope, this yeah. one is not. Could get entered in a walk up, though, if he so chooses to. Uh, next one here is Knight Champion Black River Lefty. This is a three-year-old black and tan male. Uh, the owner on record here is Chad McCoyne and Brad Heil of Harper City, Indiana. I know that they have sold this dog down to the Heather Island guys down in Florida, Ike Rainey and Malcolm Rains. Yeah. Um, but there's Lefty. Yep, and there's the dog sired by Chad's uh, uh, stud dog, Grand Knight Champion for Black River Poncho, and the dam is Grand Knight Champion 2, Simple Life Sadie. Both dogs have won a lot. Sire and Dan both have done a lot, a lot of winning. Lefty is no accident. Yeah, Chad and Brad will have a, a pile of dogs there entered out on most. They usually do good at this event, but uh, if it's kind of in their there, back, kind of in their backyard, they get to guide their dogs hunt on their familiar territory. And I think that's always a little bit of an advantage, but they also have some pretty solid black hounds. Absolutely. But uh, if Lefty's there, it'll be uh, somebody coming up from Florida to hunt him. So we'll yeah. see if they, they yeah. make it. Hopefully or not. they do. Yeah. Uh, the third dog here, another black and tan. This is a night champion, HHHW's Royal Freak Nasty. Three-year-old black and tan male owned by Brian Haskins, Michael Wilson, and Darren Holloman of Searcy, Arkansas. Yep, sires out of a well-known black and tan Kentucky River Superman. That's a Grand Knight Champion 3, and the dam is Grand Knight Champion Wilson's Royal Black Sadie 2. And their dog out uh, west away, so a little drive to Automos, but hopefully they make it in. Yep. Uh, this dog here is entered in Autumn Oaks. This is Grand Knight Champion 2 Bottomland Mule. It's a three-year-old black and tan male owned by Bruce Gilliam and Elbert Short of Woodville, Alabama. Yeah, this dog is sired by dual Grand Champion Patrick's Black River Tex, and the dam is Champion Wax Hurricane Irma. And I've heard this is a nice dog. I, he came from uh, Mr. Smith down in Mississippi, yep. and uh, he re I know he really liked this dog. He's a good dog trainer, and this dog was doing a, a good job at a very young age. Ended up somebody... Uh, I guess uh, liked him better than Mr. Smith did, or liked him well enough. They probably had to shell out a little bit of money for this dog. I'd say it was yeah. a lot of a lot of talk on this dog. Yeah. Randy down there, he kind of has a reputation for starting yep. good dogs. Randy and, Smith, that's it. That's yeah. who had him. Yep. yep. And uh, you mentioned Black River Tex. They are kind of making a name for itself in the black and tan stud pen. And here's another one sired by Tex right here. We have Night Champion Do Wops Me Too Tattoo. It's a two year old black and tan male. Owned by Joe Gillette and Mitch Weiss of Green Springs, Ohio. Yep, same thing. Patrick's Black River Tex and Doo Wops Jojo the Circus Clown is the dam there. This That's is kind a, of a kind of a different name. Yeah, I would have to see the the <laughs> yeah. origin of the Doo Wops name yeah. there. But uh, this dog did good. Isn't that a song or something? Doo Wop Wop Wop. Oh, let's not get to singing here. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want me singing. <laughs> but. Uh, Hey, they're there in Ohio, so hopefully they make the trip over to uh, to Autumn Oaks to maybe make a run at the Triple Crown as well. Yep. That's the end of the black dogs there. Let's move on to our couple of blue ticks we have. Uh, first one we have is uh, Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion Soldier Boy, a four-year-old blue tick male owned by Gary Vining of Houghton, Louisiana. Yeah, Southern Dog. Uh, Grand Knight Champion, Grand Champion Blazing Bud is the sire, and Metcalf Spring Hill Blue Girl is the dam of Soldier, Soldier Boy. I don't know if that's supposed to be Soldier, maybe. Soldier, soldier okay. boy. Yeah, I don't know. It's soldier. If it's supposed it's... to be soldier, I think they misspelled it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other uh, blue tick that has do had double cast wins at Winter Classic and is in uh, contention for the Triple Crown is Night Champion Perley's Blue Clyde. It's a four-year-old blue tick male owned by Stephen Perley of Salem, Indiana. Yeah, dog is off of Grand Night Champion Champion Walston's Blue Big Country, a name we've heard a lot here in the last five, six years. 10 years now. Night champion McDonald's Hat Creek Blue Kate 2 is the dam. Let's get over to our English dogs now. We got a handful of English dogs here. Uh, first one is Grand Night Champion 3, Grand Champion Kentucky's Ghost Train. It's a six year old English male owned by Jordan Dwyer and Leander Brooks of Morgantown, Kentucky. 
out of Granite Champion Champion River Bottoms Cracker Jack. That is a good looking sucker. I remember when I first saw a picture of that dog, I just like the way that dog is built, the way he looks, kind of his, the color of the dog. But yeah, old Cracker Jack out of Texas. And the dam is Champion Night Champion Brady Creek Tree Slam and Sadie. Nice. Uh, Ghost Train usually hunts at Automos, so I would kind of expect this dog to be there competing at Automos. If I'm not mistaken, he's made to the Grand 16 before. Yeah, but he's not entered at the, not, not in any. the advanced entry list anyway. He's not, but one that we do have entered in the advanced entry list is this one here, Grand, Grand Night Champion 4, Little Miss Dolly, 7-year-old English female owned by Mr. Roy Rogers of Murfreesboro, Arkansas. Yeah, and this dog is off of uh, Grand Night Champion Red Ruby Hardtime Crow, a dog of Asa Briggs up here in Michigan. Uh, did, a, did a lot of winning as well. And the dam is Grand Night Champion 2 Rogers Diamond Daisy. A tough little dog there. And Roy's always packing a good dog, so he'll... He, He's one of the one of the ones to beat. He's yeah. entered up here, so. Yep, and we always see Roy since I've been here. He's always been at Winter Classic, Autumn Oaks, and Winter and the and the World Championship. Almost never fails. He gets a he gets he comes to those events and has usually has pretty good success. Absolutely, Murfreesboro, Arkansas, Roy Rogers. Next on the list here, Grand Night Champion, Grand Champion Phillips Folgers Coffee. Eight-year-old English male owned by David Poole of Red Level, Alabama. Yeah, okay, I always kind of like that Folgers Coffee. Uh, Grand Night Champion Backyard Limited Edition Lee, and the dam is Night Champion Grand Champion K's Sandy Lou. Older dog here. Yeah, one of the older ones on the list here. Well, we'll go from old to young here. Here we have Night Champion Grand Champion Smokus, Smoking Aces Talk to Me Goose, HTX. It's a one-year-old English male owned by Justin Hofstetter of Pleasant Hill, Missouri. Yeah, this dog is off of another Main Street dog, Mr. Clutch this time. That's a Night Champion dog. The dam is dual grand smoking aces dealing with karma HTX. Yeah, I, this young dog here. I actually talked to Justin on the phone yesterday. Sounds like Goose is dealing with some heartworm issues. Oh boy. So oh he boy. may be sitting this one out. Yeah. Too bad. That's too nice bad. young dog to get have heartworm issues. Yeah, no but. kidding. Uh let's transition to our tree and walkers. We got a pile of tree and walkers and a lot of yellow here. So that means a lot of them are entered into the autumn oaks. So uh, we may see some of our uh, top contenders here on this list. And the first one that is entered in Autumn Oaks, Night Champion Burkett's Rosie. It's a five-year-old tree and walker female owned by Troy Burkett of Martinsville, Indiana. Yeah, and that's not very far from Richmond there where Autumn Oaks is going to be held. And this dog is sired by Grand Knight Champion 2 Burkett's Stylish DJ HTX. And the dam is Grand Knight uh, Theros Hurricane Sandy HTX. Next one here, champion Grand Knight champion Sulphur Bottom Squall. It's a five-year-old tree and walker female owned by Holden Hawkins of Bogota, Texas. Uh, sired by a dual Grand Combs Wheeler, and the dam is Knight champion champion House's Screaming Nell. Yeah. I know the who handled this in Winter Classic was uh, Norris. Uh, is it Randy Norris? Oh, Randy there? Norris. Yeah, so yeah, Does he yeah. usually come yeah. to Autumn Oaks? He's more of a he, Winter Classic He does. Guy. He okay. does, yeah. So we, we're liable hope, to see that dog come. Hope, hopefully he might make it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, next one here, uh, kind of a household name now in the dog world. Red Knight Champion 2, Rose's Wild Dream and Echo. It's a four-year-old tree and walker male owned by Logan Rose, Logan Estridge, and Randy Sizemore out of McKee, Kentucky. Yeah, sired by Grand Knight Champion 5, Old South Stylish Knockout, and the dam is Knight Champion Wild Dream and Gypsy. This is a dog that we first got to kind of see at the first TOC, I think it was. It was the second second, second TOC. TOC. Made it all the way to the semifinals, I believe it was. Yeah, he made the top six. Top six, yeah. Old, old Echo here. And Logan Rose has sure done a lot of winning with this dog already. Breeding him a lot now, I see, too. Yeah, he's since made the top 20 of the world championship. He did good at the uh, Super Stakes. Yeah. The final cast of that, so. Yeah. Yeah, double cast wins at Winter Classic, and he's in contention for the Triple Crown now. Good looking hound, too. Yeah, he sure is. Uh, next one here, also entered in Autumn Oaks, Grand Knight Champion Huggins Carmen. Three-year-old tree and walker female owned by Ben Huggins of Car uh, Cordova, Alabama. Good deal, yeah. Uh, out of Grey Knight Champion, Champion Barnett, and Ernest Last Chance in the Dam is just a, a open registered dog, Pine Ridge Dime. Huggins Carmen. Yeah, dog does really well, so uh, be a tough one to beat. I know he does good at those events down there. Uh, Grand Knight Champion Mullins Loudmouth Preacher is the next one. Also entered in Autumn Oaks. This is a three-year-old tree and walker male owned by Jeffrey Mullins of Carbon Hill, Alabama. Yeah, this the sire of this dog is just open registered again. Be Good Stinger is his name, and the dam is a night champion, Self Little Girl. Yeah. I don't know the dog that well. I know Jeffrey Mullins. He kind of has a little YouTube channel, and he uh, he was posting videos from the Winter Classic this past year, and, and it was a pretty good deal. I wish I would have remembered the name of his YouTube channel. But. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully he does the same for Autumn Oaks. I like to see I like to see content like that out there for people to see. Heck yeah. 
Next one here, Grand Knight Champion Willie's Little Ant. It's a three-year-old Trim Walker female owned by Ellis Keene of London, Kentucky. Yep, this is off the world champion Gray's Rackham Willie, and the dam is a open register dog. Wipeout, she squirms a lot. And this little Ann dog, we've, he's been winning quite a bit with this little dog, too. I think J.R. Gray's handled the dog a bunch and several other guys, but that's a must be a nice little dog because we see her in the winter circle a lot. Absolutely. Entered for Autumn Oak, so they're going to have to contend with Ann. That's right. Uh, next one here, not entered in Autumn Oaks at this time, is night champion Loose Goose. It's a six-year-old tree and walker male owned by Tony Skelton of Lamar, Mississippi. Backwater Bone Collector is the sire. That's a recognizable name and one of the top reproducers in UKC in the current listings. That's a grand night. And then the dam is Champion House's Lipper Girl. Uh, here's another familiar name for folks out there, and this dog is entered in Autumn Oaks already, and that's Grand Night Champion Willie's Insane Scar. She's a three-year-old Trim Walker female owned by J.R. Gray and Ellis Keene out of London, Kentucky. Yep, and off of J.R.'s uh, world champion uh, Willie dog, and the dam is also off of a world champion. This time, Grand Night Champion 2, Spavano Creek Insane Emmy. That dog won uh, for, for Lane Lane Emmy's uh, or uh, Lane Denny's dog. Uh, won where was that? Your first year at UKC, I think, Marshalltown, in Marshalltown, Iowa. Marshalltown, Iowa. She mm -hmm. won the world championship there. So, Insane Scar is off of two world champions. Yeah, not bad. That's a pretty uh, prominent cross. A lot of well-known dogs out of that. Yeah, and like you. Little Ann, you know, this dog is they're winning a lot with this little dog as well. Oh, absolutely. The next one here, Night Champion is Sipsy Creek Gemma. Three-year-old Tree and Walker female owned by Gary King of Hamilton, Alabama. Good deal. Another Alabama dog here. Out of uh, uh, open registered sire. Again, tree pack and sunny. And same thing with the dam. Phillips Lacey is the dam here. Kind of surprised to see this next dog isn't entered in, entered in yet. Maybe a walk-up that we see there. That's night champion Hiddle's zip code. Three-year-old Tree and Walker male owned by Troy Hiddle of Zanesville, Ohio. Yeah, one of the nicest guys you'll meet, Troy, there. Uh, out of Grand Champion, Grand Night Champion, Big Money, and the dam is Jeans Lacey. Hiddle zip code. Next one here, Grand Night Champion 2, True Grits Liquid Steel. This dog's entered in Autumn Oaks. Uh, Two-year-old Tree and Walker male, owned by Dustin Brummett of Crab Orchard, Kentucky. Yeah, the dam, or the sire is Grand Night Champion Pushers, True Grit HTX, and the dam is also a Grand Night Nocturnal Xena. Yeah, dog made it. Passed the first round of the TOC finals this year, so that yep. dog's probably uh, familiar to a lot of people. Yep. As is this next one here, our national dual champion from last year. Uh, Grand Night Champion 2, Champion Bart's High Dollar Whiskey. The four-year-old Trim Walker male, owned by Bruce Bartz of Denton, Maryland. Yep, this dog is off a of dual Grand Waltz's Kingpin, and the dam is Grand Night Champion Backwater Honey Cove. It's always entered on Thursday and Friday night with Steve Basham handling the dog, so he's making another run out of here. Yep. Uh, also here entered in Autumn Oaks, Night Champion Davis's Backwoods Timber, a two-year-old tree and walker male owned by Braden and Kevin Davis, and they're coming all the way from Russellville, Arkansas. Sired by Grand Night Champion Davis's Midnight Ride, and the dam is Voodoo Lady Stylish Jill. Another one entered in Autumn Oaks here, Night Champion Champion Mr. Hyde, two-year-old tree and walker male owned by Ashley Dalton of Hearts, West Virginia. Another uh, dog off of the world champion, uh, Gray's Rackham Willie. And the dam is Grand Night Champion Insane Bella. Three of them off Willie here. Yep. And uh, rounding out our list of uh, double cast winners from Winter Classic are Night Champion Ringtail Tom Brady, seven-year-old tree and walker male owned by Tristan Couch of London, Kentucky. Sired by Night Champion Mule Ridge Abe and Mule Ridge Kennel Mel is the dam of uh, Ringtail Tom Brady. But yeah, so that's our list of double cast winners at the uh, these most recent Winter Classic, and they are all leading the Triple Crown race going into Autumn Oaks. So it'll be interesting to see how they fare at Autumn Oaks this year. Our partners at Dogtra have just launched an exclusive program available only to active UKC competitors. So if you've competed any time this year or plan to compete in any future UKC events, you can qualify to receive exclusive benefits through Dogtra. Take advantage of this exclusive program and become a Daltra Competition Field Staff today. To sign up, visit daltra.com forward slash Daltra Competition Field Staff. That's daltra.com forward slash Daltra Competition Field Staff. For everyone attending Autumn Oaks, Daltra has some exciting activities happening at the Daltra booth. They are offering free on site repairs for all Pathfinder users on a first come, first served basis. Daltra is also doing a big sweepstakes at Autumn Oaks. They're giving away a complete Pathfinder 2 tracking and training system. Visit the Daltra booth in the Hunt building to enter to win.
All right, let's shift gears a little bit. We've been working on uh, our latest issue of Coonhound Bloodlines, which is going to be the September issue. That'll probably be in mailboxes not long after you listen to this episode. And that's always our youth issue. Um, we have youth nationals results in there, some other youth event results. But one thing we always highlight in there is our Horizon Award winners. Uh, that's a program that originated in 2002, and it's kind of been a way for our charter breed associations to recognize uh, an individual inside their breed who they think best represents their breed on the on the youth level. And uh, it, if you look at the past winners of these Horizon Awards from the seven different charter breed days, they do a pretty good job of of determining who it's going to be because there's a lot of uh, people in there that have had a major impact on coon hound and coon hunting in, in the past from these Horizon Award winners. That's that's for sure. I was kind of involved with one of the breed associations at during that time when it was first introduced. And and I know a couple of our first winners, they have went on, and, and I know at least one of them is still – a uh, very very active in the in the breed association right now you know grew up to be a fine hunter and a, and and getting involved with the association but yeah they turn in essays and things like that and they kind of get graded and obviously kind of you know uh, look at what uh, the things they've accomplished and how active they are and and yeah so it's a good it's a good program horizon horizon award is what it is well anytime you can recognize the youth in a, in yeah. a positive way this is a a great thing. Uh, for charter breed association out there, they probably know uh, Grace Hess, uh, kind of our publishing direct uh, manager here at UKC, mm-hmm. kind of heads up this Horizon thing. Um, so any questions you have, maybe we we'll have to pull her on next year in in advance of the Horizon Award coming out for some uh, yeah. de- or some specific details. But yeah. uh, I do know for winning it in this past issue, she says you get a one year subscription to Coonhound Bloodlines, a hundred dollar check, and some UKC merchandise. And I know that most of the breed associations, they'll recognize the kid. I know uh, sometimes they get jackets or plaques or different things from the breed association as well. So some cool things you can get for winning this award. Yeah. And uh, like I said, if you uh, have the September issue of Coonhound Bloodlines, there's some good interviews with all these kids in there. I think there's five different kids highlighted, five different interviews, and some good ones. I enjoyed reading those. Yeah. So be sure to look that up. So let's go over some of this year's winners. Uh, we'll start out with our American Black and Tan uh, Coonhound Association winner. That was Morgan McClurg of Westby, Wisconsin. Uh, Morgan, she had a uh, first time I've I've seen Morgan. It was this year at Black and Tan Days in Mount Gilead, Ohio. She had a good weekend there. Uh, I think she won a couple other. She won the Hunt Scholarship and the Show Scholarship that the Black and Tan Association does. Association does, and then she went on to win the Horizon Awards. Oh so yeah, good, good weekend for Morgan. Good for her. Uh, the next one, Blue Tick Breeders of America, Joe Lee Carter from Ellabelle, Georgia. Uh, came up from Georgia. She was at Blue Tick Days. She shows dogs primarily for the Blue Tick, uh, in the Blue Tick breed, and uh, she had a good. Uh, she has a good little interview in uh, in the September issue of Coonhound Bloodline. So be sure to get that and read about a little bit about Joe Lee Carter. Uh, the United English Breeders and Fanciers Association winner was Marissa Stroud of Rowan, Indiana. Um, Marissa is the daughter of Jamie Stroud. Jamie you know, Stroud, Jamie, yeah. Bro- yeah. Uh, brother Dylan, both active in our events and Marissa's right there with them. She's started handling dogs and, and both the show and the hunt at English days the past couple of years and is getting more involved and uh, starting to like it. It seems like the next one here from the national red bone Coonhound association is Bryn Posey of Galopolis, Ohio. Um, she was, uh, Galopolis. The... Okay. <laughs> <There we go. laughs> close. <laughs> That's close to it. Yeah. So congratulations to Bryn. Again, a, a young lady who uh, shows dogs primarily, I think, but she enjoyed, she hunted a few dogs in the fellowship hunt at, at the mm-hmm. National Redbone Days this year um, with her dad, Bryn, I believe. They both handled dogs and did did well. So uh, good job to Bryn. And uh, rounding out what we have this year uh, is from the Tree and Walker Breeders and Fanciers Association. And that's a familiar name. We've mentioned her a lot this year. Abby Weber of Gloucester, Ohio. Obviously, she won the Spotlight Series this year. Uh, she's winning a bunch of youth shows and adult shows alike, so she's uh, going to have a, a big future ahead of her, it seems like. So some really great picks there from the from the Chartered Breed yeah. Associations, it seems yeah. like. Looks like uh, that's five of them, and uh, according to Grace, you mentioned her, she kind of puts these things together, but she did not receive anything from the National Plot Hound Association or the American Leopard uh, Breeders Association before the deadline, so... Uh, but yeah, five five of them uh, noted here, and one thing that I see that is uh, kind of a common denominator: they're all ladies. Oh wow, aren't yeah. they? I, I guess so. I did. Yeah, yeah, they are. You're they right. Are. I didn't yeah. even notice that when I was going through uh, there. But. Yeah. So uh, hey, the girls are did a fine job this last year, and 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 we see a, quite a bit of that. Yeah, I that's sure true. Do. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, so hey, congratulations to all of them. Yeah. Nice, uh, nice accomplishment. Absolutely. 
Let's move on to uh, to the next program we're going to give you a little insight on. That's the Tournament of Champions. Uh, we talked about it uh, on the last episode, some regional changes that we made. Um, and now let's talk just a little bit about where we're at this year as far as dogs go. So this update was uh, August 22nd. I do updates every other Tuesday online, so you guys can always keep up with TOC qualified list on there um, to see if your dog's qualified or not. It's a good way to do it. Um, as of right now, we have 582 qualified dogs. Um, I know that doesn't probably mean anything to you guys, but to put it in perspective a little bit compared to the past two years qualifying, uh, the first year I'm not going to take into consideration. It was obviously uh, not on the le level of these three, but uh, 582 this year. Last year on August 30th, we had 573. And then the year before that in 2021, on August 24th, we had 563. So we're ahead of schedule yeah, right now. Yeah. Looking, we're training really well this year. Yeah. And okay, you might not think that's all that many because we're going to end up with quite a few, but there's a whole lot of dogs right now that are probably sitting on four cast wins. Just need that one more cast win or maybe two to, uh, to you know, be qualified to get that five cast wins, you know, for the year. So this number will increase quickly from here on out for the rest of the year. Yeah. September and October is a major driver yeah. in this, in this number that we'll see. Yeah. It won't surprise me for this to be at, you know, a thousand by the time we're done with October yeah. and adding them through the and end And maybe of the year. even more than that. Yeah. It really starts, like I said, it jump. it really starts jumping up from here forward. Yeah. But it's good to see that we're already trending ahead of the past couple of years. So I'm looking forward to a really strong entry year this year. Yeah, I see you made a note here of, uh, and we get this question a lot. Where, hey, I've got my dog qualified. I haven't got anything in the mail yet to show that I'm qualified for it. But we don't actually send anything out when they're qualified. Uh, you'll uh, Not as far as being qualified anyways, but uh, just check the list on the website that you mentioned you'd update every other Tuesday. And uh, if your dog's on there now, the only, uh, the other thing, you know, if, if the report, as long as the report makes it in a timely manner, you said that use the date of uh, August 22nd was the last update, but that's just for the reports we've received. That doesn't necessarily mean if just and every event that was held, you know, we have to get those reports in and have them processed as well. Right. And we get that a lot, you know, guys saying, well, Hey, I just qualify. I finished, I got my last win last week, or let's say it was August 15th or what have you. Well, we might just not have had the report in, but hopefully it'll be in to make the next one, you know? So, right. Yeah. But then, uh, certificates and invitations, uh, for the TOC do in fact get mailed out all at the same time, the first week of February. Right. Each year we do that. Every send everybody's out then. Kind of gives our, ourselves that January cushion yeah. to get the rest of our reports yeah. in and all that good stuff. Where was it? Just this week we had a caller call in was just sure that people are posting pictures of their <clears throat> of their certificates that they got for the TOC and wondering where his was. But I think he got it mixed up with something else maybe. Yeah, and there's all kinds of certificates floating out there for yeah. different things. Yeah, so. a lot of different things, yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, and one other thing we're getting a lot of calls on, and it's good. That means there's new, fresh faces coming into the sport or maybe into this program specifically, but all it takes to get qualified for the Tournament of Champions, five cast wins at UKC License Event from January 1st to December 31st of that year. Yep. That's all it takes. People ask, do qualifiers count? RQEs, do they count? Do state championships count? Yep. If you got a cast win a, at a licensed event, that counts. Absolutely. That win counts. Well, let's take a look at the uh, and actually the wins from last year's TOC finals are in the and the regions they count as well. That's right. Yep. Yep. Well, let's take a, a, a closer look at the 582 qualified dogs here. Um, uh, the breed breakdown first. We got 41 black and tans, two leopards, 59 blue ticks, 78 English, nine plots, 11 red bones, 365 walkers, and 17 X bred. Yeah. Uh, when you look at the breakdowns of the sex, we have 337 males against 245 females. And our top five performance states so far this year uh, was still still got a lot of time to go here. A lot could change. But right now we have Kentucky leading the way with 70, Indiana with 54, Ohio with 51, Missouri with 43, and Tennessee with 40. Kind of the same names there. Seems like we see them, see those names a lot, or those states a lot. I don't think there's anything too surprising there. Yeah. You know, the one thing you, you we didn't mention was the qualifying year. We still get that question quite a, you know, what uh, when can you qualify? And it's the calendar year, January 1st through December 31st. Yep. That's when you need to get those five cast wins during that time period, during the calendar year. Yep. Top for, for, or performing dogs. You got yep. a list of those again, don't you? Yeah, I just did Couple the top five this time. There I you go. We'll go yep. more in depth in at a later date, but yeah. Uh, our top, for our top five cast winning dogs this year, one that we talked about a couple, I think maybe a couple months ago, 
Uh, now has 26 wins. That's champion Grand Night Champion 3, Swamp Thing Honey. <laughs> Three-year-old Trium Walker female, owned by Tom Frost Jr. and Stacy Smitherman of Pawnee, Oklahoma. That's just crazy. It seems wins. like last year we also had a dog with something close to that, seems yeah. like. But, yeah, that's a lot of cast wins throughout the year. Yeah. Uh, this dog is sired by a dual grand Combs Wheeler, and the dam is also a dual grand champion, Moser's White Ice. Hey, good thing about this, this dog is going to be, is already pre entered in Autumn Oak, so I look forward to this dog coming, and, yeah. uh, and I'd like to see it in action. Yep. Tom is actually, Tom came to the World Championship last year in, in Tennessee and was came there to help us judge and this and that, and I think we used him on Friday night, and uh, might have, it was a Friday night. Yeah. I think. We had him wore out, I think, Saturday night. He's during the live show, he was sitting there in the uh, in the chair and he was crashed hard. I he even was took tired. a I even got a photo op with him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he even knows that. <laughs> he does now. He does now. <laughs> Put that on the big screen at the <laughs> Automos Tom. Yeah. Well, yeah. We actually have another dog with 26 wins, so we may have a tight race oh, going, go. down yeah. The, yeah. going down the home stretch here. This is Grand Night Champion 2, Big Timber Turbo, just a one-year-old train walker male owned by Benjamin Lee Clawson of Roan Mountain, Tennessee. Yeah, this dog is sired by a Hall of Fame sire, Bennett Springs Joe, and Raglan's Wipeout Dot is the dam. I wonder who is going to end the year with the most cast wins. We'll see. Then we got a couple black dogs here. First one, 18 wins. Grand champion, Grand Night champion three, Hayes Cousin Charlie. Six-year-old black and tan male owned by Jeff and Jordan Brown out of Bearden, Arkansas. Sired by Grand Night champion Collins Joe, and the dam is a dual grand black iron Darla. Then we got another black dog here. Champion, Grand Night champion McPherson, all-in double deuce. 17 cast wins this year. Uh, Deuce is a one-year-old black and tan male owned by Charlie McPherson of Four Dice, Arkansas. Yeah, the Sires Grand Knight Champion Champion Wilson and Holloman's Royal Cable 2, and the Dam is Grand Knight Champion Wilson's Royal Black Sadie 2. I think we mentioned her name in this podcast earlier. Yep, I think we did. 17 cast wins. And also with 17 cast wins, kind of rounding out our top five cast winners at this point of the year, Champion Grand Knight Champion Charles Tree Singing Skybo. The one-year-old Trian Walker female owned by Ryan Charles of Van Sant, Virginia. Out of dual Grand Mountaintop Slow Talking Bow HTX2, and the dam is Grand Knight Champion Champion Sky's the Limit. Yeah. See, Bow on there, still our uh, top reproducer. You know, you look back through the history of our podcast, and that top reproducer uh, podcast is actually, I think, our number one as far as Was it? downloads with. Yeah. So hopefully yeah. I'm uh, working on something a little bit later in the year to maybe look at how that list has changed through the year and little maybe a further deep diving in top reproducers. Seems like people kind of like that. Yeah, that'll be a fun one. I enjoyed going over those lists too. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, that's kind of rounding up our insight on the uh, TOC right now. Uh, Let's uh, shift gears to the bench uh, bench show side of things, to the top 10 update. Um, That one is a little bit closer to being done. That that series year runs from November 1st to October 31st. So we only got a couple more months left. But we got some big ones left, uh, most notably Autumn Oaks. The six dogs that get category wins at Autumn Oaks are going to really shake up that uh, that list a little bit, unless they're already up there. Yep. And I think what is there up for grabs? There's some money here for this. What do we put up? $15,000, I right. think it is, for the top 10 bench show that we uh, that we have our final show at the Winter Classic. And, and these dogs that are in the top 10 of their breed are those that are going to get an invite to that uh, top 10 show at the Winter Classic for that money. If if you haven't been there, and a lot of you know, it's we've re, we've tried to really make that something special, and I think it kind of made a, a name for itself, and people yeah. are are wanting to go there and be a part of that experience, and it's just a really neat show, one of the it neater is. shows all it year. It is. Uh, but to talk a little bit about a timeline for that, obviously the series year ends October thirty first. Uh, we give ourselves a little bit of time there at the end of the year um, to finalize everything, get reports in. Uh, we'll finalize the list on December thirty first. And then uh, your invites will go out the first week of January. So that's when you can be expecting stuff for the top 10. Um, and I thought today would be a good, we could look at uh, maybe not the whole list, but we could look and see what the cutoffs are to get yeah. in the top 10 right now. And then maybe the number one dog in the breed right now. So kind of an inside look at what the top 10 list is looking like. And uh, we'll start out with the black and tans. Uh, right now, the cutoff to be in the top 10 is 29 points. A top dog in breed uh, Grand Champion 2, Cobra Time 007, had 143 points already. Uh, it's a three-year-old uh, male owned by Felicia Bailey of Prairie, Mississippi. Yeah, and if I remember right, this dog actually won the breed at the last year's Top 10 show, I think. 
Um, and the dog is off of Grand Champion, Confirmation Champion, Gilman's Good Time Charlie, and the dam is Champion PR Gilman's Small Time Scandal. Yep. Yeah, you know, we've talked about uh, Charlie a lot on here. It seems like he's really throwing some nice Ben Show dogs, um, especially out of this uh, litter here, I think, with Scandal. But, you know, we don't talk about David enough and what he does. I mean, I know him and Misty, they have, not only are they throwing a bunch of good Ben Show dogs out of these, but he also has the dog Rebel and then Redneck Roll, who Rebel right now is our current top black and tan reproducer. Yeah. And then Redneck Roll, of course, just won a national dual championship yep. and, and is stacking up cast wins. and just impressive what the run that they are on uh, and what they're doing for the black and tan breed. Uh, moving on to the American Leopard Hounds. Uh, cut off to be in the top 10 is 27 points right now. Uh, top dog in the breed is Grand Field Champion, Grand Water Champion, Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Soak Creek, Mr. Moose, Spot. Uh, 90 points for Moose right now. He's a two-year-old male, and he's owned by Chuck and Lucas Slattery of Spring City, Tennessee. Yeah, and he is sired by a dog that comes from Mr. Leopard, uh, Mr. Meeks in down in Georgia. Meeks uh, Georgia Cracker is the sire, and then Meeks Georgia Little Ginger is the dam. Yep. Done good with that dog, and it's still young. Yeah, he yet. is. He is. That's a good looking, good looking hound too. Yep. Moving on, uh, that dog also went as breed at the he did. Uh, top he did. ten this, year, did, yeah. or this year. Yep, he did. Yep. Back in February. Yep. Moving on to the Blue Ticks. Cut off to be in the top 10 for the Blue Ticks is 32 points. And the top dog in the breed right now, confirmation champion, grand champion five, Rockin' W's Blue Cover Girl. 98 points for uh, Gigi right now, I think that's what they call her. That's a five-year-old female owned by Angela and Jackson Cable of Connersville, Indiana. Yeah, it seems like every time we talk about bench show stuff on these podcasts, Angela and Jackson have a dog in the, in the mix somewhere. <laughs> yeah, they sure do. They sure do. <laughs> and this time we're just talking about the leaders. Here they are again. Yeah, this dog is sired by Confirmation Grand Champion, Grand Champion Hall of Fame, Rockin' W is Rock On, and then the dam is the World Show Champion, Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion, Rockin' W is Blue Gr uh, Glamour Girl oh. is the dam. Moving on here to the English breed. A uh, cutoff to be in the top 10 for the English breed is 28 points. And our top dog, again, I believe it was our top dog in the English breed last year, Grand Champion 3, Sideshow Bobby Sue. 96 points for Sue so far. She's a three-year-old female owned by Jacob Brooks of Pounding, Ville, Pounding Mill, Virginia. Yeah, out of Night Champion, Grand Champion 2, PR Bear Branch Dawson, and a Hall of Fame uh, dam, PR Bear Branch Bobby Lou. Oh, yeah, and Jacob is just a young guy. We've talked about him quite a bit on these uh, podcasts before, a uh, young man from uh, Virginia. Matter of fact, speaking of Autumn Oaks, he won't be showing at Autumn I was just Oaks this say year. That. His, his father is going to be judging the uh, part of the bench show at Autumn Oaks this year. So that kind of takes Jacob out. But uh, as a good young, good young handler and a good young dog man, he's done a lot of winning with uh, Sideshow Bobby Sue. Yeah, he, he hunts. He's uh, yep. winning some hunts now, too. Yep. And I hope, hopefully, he'll bring a hunting dog. Yeah. And he won't just be sitting around that, all yeah, weekend. He won't be kicked there. He won't be out of that. He can enter in the hunt. That's hopefully, right. he does. Yeah. Yeah, let's move on to the plot breed. Uh, right now, the cutoff to be in the top 10 of the plot breed is 30 points. And the top dog is champion Midnight Brindle Jenna. 120 points so far for the three year old plot female that's owned by Connie Hogan out of Winburg, Pennsylvania. Yep, out of Grand Field Champion, Grand Water Champion, Night Champion, Grand Champion, Midnight, I am Gino, HTX, and the dam is Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion, Midnight, Brindled, Burning Flame. Bred by uh, Connie and her husband there, and, and they just seem to, year after year after year, just uh, keep uh, coming out with some very nice plot hounds. Yeah. So they actually won on a most last year with a dog bonfire, right? They did. They and and they won the world championship. So they've been very successful with their plot hounds. And Scott, he hunts the dogs too. Yeah. And most of these dogs are also hunting dogs. Yeah, I think they have one entered in our national dual championship. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at Red Bones. Uh, cut off to be in the Red Bone top ten is thirty points currently. Top dog in the breed is Grand Champion three, Diamond Grand Confirmation Champion Skylines Push My Luck. 184 points for the lucky dog again, uh, our top red bone last year. And uh, this dog's just three, year old, three years old yet, but has made a big impact on the show world. And he is owned by Beth Jenkins of Culpeper, Virginia. Yeah, dog has done, there's very few dogs have done more winning than this dog has in the last couple of years. Out of Grand Champion 2 PR Code Red Timber Cutter, and the dam is Grand Champion Hoo Hoo Hollow Aerial Assault. And kind of rounding out our, uh, our top 10 discussion is going to be our Trion Walker uh, leaderboard here. 
uh, cut off to be in the top 10 is 96 points. <laughs> we talked about the other six breeds. All their cutoffs were between 27 and 32 points. And then you have the tree and walker breed here, 96 points. That leads a couple breeds. Yeah. What, yeah. what a competitive uh, uh, breed that is. It is. Uh, the top dog right now is Confirmation Champion, Grand Champion 2, Skyline and Leave You, Dare the Devil. Uh, the dog has 221 points so far, just a two-year-old female that already has a great big long resume on the show circuit. And this dog is owned by Bridget Clary and Beth Jenkins of Broadnax, Virginia. Yeah, and this dog won the, I think, best in show at Winter Classic. Was it last year when she won that? I think it was 21. Was it 21, two yeah. years ago. But yeah, you know, you mentioned the competition in this breed and and this dog is right in the mix and right at the top of those, uh, you know, in terms of competition. Just a, a nice dog. Out of National Grand Champion, Grand Champion 2, uh, RGCH, stack them up, the business breed. And the, the dam is Night Champion, Confirmation Grand Champion, Grand Champion, Skyline, something royal. Three of the seven breed winners are there from Virginia. So, geez, tough state right now. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. Well, hey, that's a, this has been just kind of a, an insight to see what we have going on in our Coonhound program. You know, our next, we got some really good episodes coming up. We haven't done them yet, but I assume they're going to be good because we got some real good uh, uh, content lined up. I'm excited for an interview we're going to do with uh, Steve Fielder while we're at Autumn Oaks about some history stuff. I've been working on actually on an uh, outline for that the past couple of days for an interview we're going to do there. Hoping to get Doug Johnson from the Kentucky Houndsman Association on to talk about that asso uh, state association and maybe uh, some other state associations can hear what he has to say. And maybe, you know, I think it's good to to share ideas and maybe see what they're doing that they can talk about. And then obviously we're both going to be trying to talk to a lot of uh, insightful people at Deer and Autumn Oaks, do a little five, ten minute interviews with some folks and definitely interview the winners while we're there. I think yeah. we got some good stuff on tap. For sure. And I'll also be going to a couple of Beagle events here in the next month. So hopefully we can get some more Beagle content to come and uh, to put on some of these episodes here in the coming weeks. So looking forward to it. It's going to be a busy month. It is. We're going to be uh, churning out some, uh, some good content. We yeah. hope you guys stay tuned to the UKC Hunting Ops podcast. Thank you for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to give us a follow so you don't miss any of our new episodes or content.